Hello and welcome to this short film about the Lavazza Blue LB4724. Now as you can see this is the two group machine. There is a smaller one group machine with a slightly smaller boiler, the LB4723, but because the features on both machines are absolutely identical, today we're just going to be focusing on the larger LB4724. So let's take a look at how we set this up. Obviously, it's plumbed in, wired, and ready to go. So we have the power switch here on the left-hand side with two positions. Position one is a boiler filled position, so it will fill the boiler but doesn't turn on the heating element. Once the boiler is full, switch to position two to turn on the heating element in the boiler to bring it up to temperature. At that point, look down here to your dials. Now, the top dial is your boiler pressure, so starting at zero and then slowly and steadily rising to about one bar, showing you that the boiler is up at temperature. The bottom dial here is your water pressure. This is currently showing your incoming water pressure, and then when you activate the espresso buttons, it activates the pump, bringing it up to an industry standard nine bar to produce espresso. Now, of course, the main advantage of using the Lavazza capsule system is that both capsules, single and double, contain pre-dosed, pre-ground, pre-tamped portions of coffee. So this means you get optimum consistency as well as optimum freshness every single time. So let me show you how easy it is to pour espresso. We're going to remove our single porter filter select a single capsule, place that inside. Now, the capsule is pierced using spikes attached to the top of the brewing group here. Now, these spikes hang fractionally lower than the group head, so it is possible, if you're not careful, to actually clatter the porter filter into the spikes like this. Now, this, over time, will start to bend them and damage them, which means they won't be as effective in piercing the capsule. So you really want to be avoiding this. So remember to come in slightly lower, using your finger on the bottom of the handle like this for support, press up to pierce the capsule before twisting round to the right to lock in place. We're going to select our espresso cup and press the single espresso button here. And as easy as that, we have our espresso. Okay, so of course, another great feature of this machine is its ability to do all the hard work for you. So here on the left-hand side is where you can make automatic milk for cappuccinos. Now you can see there's two buttons to choose from here. Now these represent two different milk temperatures. So we've set the one on the right to be the optimum temperature to balance sweetness of the milk with the intensity of the coffee. But of course, if you do have a customer that likes it that little bit extra hot, then you can use the button on the left and sacrificing a little bit of that sweetness for temperature. So what we need to do is we need to get fresh cold milk into our milk pitcher. The colder and fresher, the better the quality of the foam. We need to purge the steamer before we start. Now this dispenses any water that's collecting in our steam arm here, which we want to do. It's as simple as that. Now being careful, as this may be hot, we're going to touch it from the top part here, insert the pitcher straight down into the milk and press the button on the right hand side. While that's being prepared, we can move on to our espresso. So again, we're going to select a single espresso capsule, our single porter filter, and just like before, insert by pushing up and around. Our cup goes underneath, and then our single espresso button is pressed. Now the milk is finished. We can take our cloth, and the first thing we want to do is we want to wipe off the excess milk residue from here before it dries. So give that a bit of a wipe. And then just to be extra clean, always remember to purge the steamer after you. There we go. Now our cappuccino foam is ready, so we tap the jug to get rid of any surface bubbles. We're going to give it a bit of a spin. And what this does is it blends milk and foam together to make really good consistency. And we're going to take our espresso, give it a little swirl, and then pour milk and foam into the cup together. Just like that, a beautiful cappuccino. Okay, so now we've seen just how easy it is to make perfect cappuccinos using the auto functions on the left-hand side of the machine. Let's take a look at the features on the right. As you can see, 
This steam arm here has a temperature probe attached to it as well, so this does have an auto off function, which means that the milk will automatically turn off when it's reached the desired temperature. And that is done by pressing this button here on the far left. This button here to the right of it is a fully manual button. This simply turns the steamer on and off, giving you, the barista, perfect control over every aspect of your milk steaming. Now, do remember that this side of the machine doesn't have an air compressor, so you will still need to manually stretch the milk no matter which of these two buttons you use. So I'm going to demonstrate the auto off by showing you how easy it is to make a latte, where we're going to stretch the milk just a little bit before adding it to an espresso. Again. I've got fresh cold milk in my milk pitcher here and of course the first thing I remember to do is to purge the steamer by pressing either of the two buttons just to clear out any residual water left up there in the pipes. Now, the good tip with here to create uh, foam manually is to create an angle with a steam wand. So you see it's entering into the milk pitcher at about 45 degrees. It's at the moment right down here at the bottom of the milk, which is my starting position. I'm going to turn it on here, and then once I've turned it on, I'm going to slowly lower the milk pitcher until I can hear a little bit of air going in. This is the small sort of chirping sound. When I hear a little bit of air going in, I'm going to hold the jug steady. I'm going to watch the milk level rise just a little bit, and when I've got about half a centimeter of stretch, I'm going to lift the jug up because I want to stop expanding it, and then just continue to heat by pushing the whole thing down onto the drip tray to let it finish its cycle automatically. And at that time, I'm going to prepare the espresso. So let's see that in action. So there we have the steam arm going into the milk at about a 45 degree angle. We're going to lower the jug. There we go, to hear the air going in. That's all the air that I want for my latte, so I'm lifting the jug back up and pushing the whole thing back down to rest it on the side like that. And now I can make our espresso. The single capsule, of course, gets inserted to the single group handle. Remember to pierce up the capsule and then pull round. We need a slightly larger latte mug. Single espresso button is pressed. And of course, we're going to remember to wipe the fresh milk from the steam arm before it dries on, giving it nice and clean, pushing it away and giving it a purge. Give that milk jug just a little tap and a spin to incorporate a small amount of foam with the wet milk underneath. This will give you a nice glossy appearance. It gives you a nice shine to your latte. And all we need to do is just incorporate that milk into the cup. And if you feel like it. Okay, so one of the most common problems we encounter with coffee machines uh, is that they're not being cleaned properly. Now, not cleaning your machine will result in bitter, astringent flavors going into your coffee. So it's really important, no matter whether we have capsule machines or traditional machines with beans and grinders, that on a daily basis, we strip those old residual coffee oils away from the machine to stop them tainting the flavor for future coffees. So now I'm going to show you how to do that right now. First of all, we remove one of our porta filters and replace it using our cleaning porta filter. This is one supplied with the machine with this little nut on here. We're going to use uh, some appropriate cleaning agents. So we use Polycaf, um, but plenty of other brands are available as long as they are suitable for cleaning coffee machines. We're going to place a small amount of that inside our blank porta filter. Doesn't need to be too much, about half a teaspoon should be plenty. This is now inserted into the group. So we're going to use these two buttons here to clean the group. So naturally, the right-hand button corresponds to the right-hand group, and the left-hand button corresponds to the left-hand group. So we're cleaning the right, so we're going to press this button and start pulling water into the group, which, because it's blanked off, is going to mix with a chemical, build pressure, which we're going to leave to do for about 10 to 15 seconds before we release that button, sending the pressure down the back of the machine, stripping off coffee oils down the pipes along the way. Now, we need to do this about three or four times to continually strip those oils away. So continue to do that same process, building pressure, 
leaving it for 10 to 15 seconds and then releasing it. Once you've done that three or four times, remove the porter filter. Obviously you're gonna see chemical inside here which needs to be emptied. And this is a good time to take your small group brush supplied with the machine and then scrub up around the group seal and in and amongst the teeth just to dislodge any coffee oils that have built up around there. We can then take our empty blank porter filter back into the machine and now we're going to repeat the exact same process as we did for the cleaning but of course rinsing. So press the button to build pressure, leave it for 10 to 15 seconds and then release that pressure down the back of the machine. This time of course it's going to be flushing and rinsing that chemical residue away. Now normally that takes about three or four rinses but if you're not sure after the third or fourth time just double check that the water is clear. If it's clear you've rinsed it enough, if there's any chemical residue in there then of course you'll need to give it one extra rinse. Once that's done, you can then move on to the left hand group, repeat the exact same process here, and then finally, just move everything out of the way, remove the drip tray, take this to a sink, give it a wash down with some soapy water, reassemble and slide back into place. Now cleaning really is as simple as that. Okay, so in this section I'm going to guide you through how to set the shot levels, how to program the temperature for the milk and to set the foam level for the cappuccino. So let's start off with the shot levels. To enter programming mode, press and hold the programming stop button until they start to flash. Now that flashing we are in programming mode, so we're going to select a, a double capsule for example. Place that in the double porter filter, insert and twist, place our measuring glasses underneath and then press the double shot button. Now this will continue to flow water through the capsule until I press it to stop so I'm going to watch out for the two shot glasses to reach their one fluid ounce mark. And then I'm going to stop the machine like that. Now that has now set that level for that button. Nice and simple. Okay, so on this new version of the machine, programming the milk temperature buttons really couldn't be simpler. First of all, you will need a milk pitcher, a calibrated thermometer and some fresh milk ready to use. We enter programming mode just like we did before by pressing and holding the programming button until it starts to flash. And then we switch to the button that we want to calibrate and press that. Now what this will do is this will activate the steam wand and of course the milk will continue to heat and it will continue to do that until you press that button again to stop. So keep an eye on your thermometer. Remember there will be a bit of a lag. So we would suggest that on the cooler button you bring that milk and turn it off at around 55 to 60 degrees because we don't want that milk going any hotter than 60 to 65. Save that extra hot setting for the extra hot button. And again, with this one, we wouldn't recommend you go much beyond 70 to 75 because at this point, you actually start to caramelize and burn the sugars in the milk, causing a slightly off acrid smell, which we don't really want. And really, that's all there is to it. Okay, so lastly, to set the air compressor, which will adjust how much or how little foam you get for your cappuccino, we just need to get inside the top of the machine. Nice and easy, we're gonna lift off this cover here. There are four bolts around, obviously I've removed three of them already and that means we can just pop off this section and again four allen key bolts here, I've done three of them already and I'm just going to remove the final one. Now there is a small tube attached to the base of this plate so we can't lift it off entirely but we can just pull it up enough to twist it round and reveal this brass valve here. Now this valve, when closed, obviously won't let any air through the compressor and your milk won't stretch at all. So finally tune it by opening that valve up ever so slightly to increase the volume of your milk. And then it's just a balancing act between how much or how little foam you want for you or your customer's cappuccino. And there we have it. That is how to set the valve for your cappuccinos. Right, so that's it from me guys. Thanks very much for watching. Remember, we do run a comprehensive list of coffee and barista courses here at the UK Training Centre, no matter what equipment you run. Simply contact your distributor, account manager or directly at uk.info at